Even a broken clock is right twice a day. This is a vintage souvenir tea towel of Uluru. It's from the 60s, back when Uluru was still known as Ayers Rock. It's a joke souvenir. I didn't climb Ayers Rock because... No palm on top. Fair call. Husband refused to carry me. Carry yourself, you fatty. Doctor's orders. It's too windy. Oh, oh. You got lost in the desert. What an awesome tea towel. I want one. Not so fast there, short bus. Our overlords won't let you have one of those. What? Where the hell not? Good question. Every now and then, the establishment manages to let the truth slip out. It's invariably an accident, but when it happens, it's glorious. Taxpayer-funded left-wing propaganda outlet, the ABC, recently produced a video entitled 1960s Tea Towel, shows how Australian attitudes have changed, and the title couldn't be more accurate. It does indeed show how Australian attitudes have changed just not in the way the far-left ruling class want you to realise. Back then, there was an expectation that you went there to climb the rock. Here, the tourists are shown as lazy and distracted. This tea towel also has a subtext that isn't very funny. Let me guess. It offends you in some way because it's Racist, sexist, homophobic, xenophobic, Islamophobic, you name it. For one, it uses sexist depictions of women as either sex objects or nagging wives. Puritanical nonsense. Damn right. So what if it makes fun of women or paints them as sex objects? Wives nag, and the only thing worse than being treated as a sex object is not being treated as a sex object. And it erases the presence of the Anungul traditional owners completely. And? Another perspective is it doesn't cuck to the establishment soy left or push white guilt. I'll give you 33 billion reasons I can safely dismiss this rubbish for what it is. Anti-white bigotry. It's just a tea towel, but it highlights the politics of Uluru and how Australian values have changed. This is where they accidentally get it right. The tea towel does indeed show exactly how Australia has changed over the last 50 years. In the 1960s, Australia was an almost entirely white European nation with a shameless sense of humour. We were untarred by the brush of political correctness. How far we have fallen. Today, there's a different answer for not climbing the rock. Yeah! We're all a bunch of wussies! Yeah, pretty much. Today, there's a different answer for not climbing the rock. Respecting the beliefs of the traditional owners. And you can even get that on a postcard. In other words, we're now a bunch of cowards afraid the ruling class will call us mean names if we say or do anything they don't like. The truth is the Ayers Rock Climb is still open, but will close on 26th of October 2019 because the people who now own it just don't want anyone to climb it. There's one tourist activity that's always caused a lot of debate, and that's climbing Uluru. Back in the 90s, it was really popular. In fact, about 70% of visitors made the steep and difficult climb. Yes, I've always wanted to come out here and, yeah. and do the climb. But to Anangu people, that was really disrespectful. And over the years, they've tried to teach visitors about their beliefs. Now there are signs around Uluru asking you not to climb. But it's never been actually banned. The government thought that if people weren't allowed to climb, they might not come to visit but they did make an agreement with the traditional owners. That climbing would be banned when fewer than 20% of visitors chose to do it. Last year, of the 300,000 visitors to Uluru, only 16% decided to climb. And now, the board of the Uluru Katajuda National Park has voted to bring in the ban in October 2019. 
It's a decision that um, Tourism Central Australia has, has supported for quite a while and um, it, it's good to see that they've also given it a really good lead time of two years so that, you know, industry is, has got plenty of time to, you know, let people know. Not everyone's happy with the decision. Some people think because Uluru is a natural feature, it shouldn't be controlled by any group of people. But others say it's been a long time coming and will help to protect this amazing place while showing respect to the culture of its traditional owners. Notice how they gloss over the major point as though it's meaningless. Ayers Rock wasn't created by Aboriginal ancestors. It is a natural phenomenon. What is obvious from the ABC propaganda video is it's not that people don't want to do the climb. It's that we've been browbeaten into thinking it's somehow offensive. The establishment have told us repeatedly not to cause any offence to anyone lest the all-powerful ruling elite will smite us with shame. These same elite turn red with anger at even the slightest hint white Australians might want to protect our land and our heritage. You see, the Founding Fathers of Australia created it as a country for the white man. One of the first acts of Parliament was to restrict immigration from any non-European territory. This is a key part of our history that is whitewashed because it doesn't suit the globalist goal of erasing whites from the face of the planet. They act as if the very purpose of Australia's founding is an abomination. Where is the respect for our traditional values and beliefs? You can't be racist against white people, remember? Ah uh, yes, I nearly forgot. Can you imagine going to America and saying your founding fathers were wrong, your constitution is wrong, and you should change because you're a bunch of gun-toting rednecks? What kind of reaction do you think you'd get from real Americans? Not the soy boy left, but genuine patriots. I suspect it would go along these lines. You know, I appreciate you know, taking the time. I don't think we're going to find a ton of common ground there if you don't like the Constitution, but it no, sounds to me like you might prefer these countries. I would. I actually am having second thoughts about, I've been here 20 years, and I'm having second thoughts about living here anymore. Oh, I, w I wouldn't discourage you from doing that. That's not me saying get out. That's no. me saying if you think that they're I better know, countries exactly. and you're not a supporter of the First no. or Second Amendment, no. you might be happier in one of these other countries. No. Thank, you. Thank you very much. In the 1960s, Australian law was changed to allow a flood of non-European migrants into the country, and not once were we, the Australian people, given a say on the matter. To this day, the rulers do all they can to withhold from the people even the hint of a voice. The Australian Constitution is in fact clear. Section 119, Protection of States from Invasion and Violence. The Commonwealth shall protect every state against invasion and on the application of executive government of the state against domestic violence. How do you think the founders would interpret mass non-European migration in terms of section 119? Why didn't they mention it then? Well, the constitution does mention race and most likely they didn't think we'd be stupid enough to change this tradition. Clearly, they failed to take into account the Marxist desire to destroy all things. But haven't we progressed from that time, Matty? Good question. The idea that simply doing something different automatically means it's progress is rubbish. What evidence do we have that replacing the white monoculture is a good thing? We now have clogged cities, ethnic enclaves, a massive housing bubble, and people are afraid to tell the truth about our national history and identity. It is a fact that monocultural societies are the safest and most peaceful. We are more divided than ever, and it's only going to get worse if we don't do something about it. Are you sure it's not that you just don't like non-whites, Maddie? That's the claim the ruling class make when anyone highlights facts about race and multiculturalism. But it's as Grindelwald said. My brothers, my sisters, it is said that I hate the no magic. I do not hate them. I do not. 
for I do not fight out of hatred. Grindelwald did nothing wrong. Yeah, apart from the whole killing a bunch of people and starting a war thing. Yes, well, there's that. Still, the truth is, it's not about hating anyone for their race. It's about protecting our right to exist in our own territories with our own traditions and culture. The only reason the establishment cry, racist, sexist, fascist, for pointing out these facts is because they really don't like whites. Whenever white people stick up for our own culture, heritage and traditions, we get smeared and defamed. Our livelihoods are attacked and deranged communists even physically assault us. So yes, Australia has changed since the 1960s. It's changed against our will without ever letting real Australians have a say on the matter. And it's changed because the far left slowly took over all institutions in their long march. As was once stated, if you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, the people will eventually come to believe it. That's interesting in and of itself, but the full quote is truly enlightened. The lie can be maintained only for such time as the state can shield the people from the political, economic and or military consequences of the lie. It thus becomes vitally important for the state to use all its powers to repress dissent, for the truth is the mortal enemy of the lie, and thus by extension, the truth is the greatest enemy of the state. The state have sold a racist lie for decades, and the only antidote to satanic lies is to tell the God's honest truth as often and as loudly as you can. As for the tea towel, it is not only epic, but serves as a reminder of who we once were and the rightful claim we have over this land. Well done to the ABC, otherwise known as the Australian Broken Clock. Thanks for watching. Share this video around, spread the truth, and I'll see ya when I see ya. What's the difference between the ABC and a cow? The bullshit comes out of a cow's bum! Ha 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 ha!